Wakurugenzi kuna story imepigwa sana ya mzee anaitwa Lord Edgerton niko sure mmesikia. Na Lord Edgerton najua ni hapa mahali niko ni home ground yake sababu ni mtu tu hapa nyuma au sio. Lakini mimi nita concentrate tu na kitu kidogo sijui kama ni accurate nyinyi ndio mtaniambia. But Lord Edgerton alikuwa mazena saiki ya kutengenezea mresho wake keja. Sababu keja yao wicha iko mbaya mrembo wao alisema mazeyo ni nyumba ya kuku so lord edgerton mazee akaingiza blood sweat and tears kutengeneza bonge la castle none like has ever been seen before in the region eventually akamaliza lakini badala ya kukaa pale enjoy maisha yake for the rest of his life ambayo ni miaka nyingi akakufa after four short years afta hiyo kazi yote leo kurugenzi na wauliza ile kitu inakuamsha kila asubuhi ni kitu utakubali kupatia stress design ukishamaliza una dedi afta miaka mbili ama unamkaga asubuhi kufanya ile kitu unapenda ambayo hata wakati ya huko kazi utakaa chini uienjoy miaka zako 30 na usiboeke Why do you wake up every day to go to work? Is it because you like it or is it because of circumstances? Tafakari hayo. Kabisa wapi makofi ya Jesse wewe? Ah kabisa sawa Jesse unaweza unaweza pita tu siogope. Tutakuedit out. Hapo <laughs> sawa maze. Woo! Gol lazima nigonge funda langu la Jules sababu ni headline hitters man. And if you see the boy in the building you just know. Mm. Oh yes. Na some humanitarian story. Na humanitarian story yangu leo ni ya jamaa anaitwa Mbae Dian. Mbae Dian was a Senegalese soldier assigned to an organization called UNAMIR which stands for United Nations Assistance uh, Mission in Rwanda. Wakati Rwanda kulikuwa kumechacha mbaya So nitawapigia story ya vile Rwanda kuli happen na vile Captain Bae Diang alikacheza na after hii story nataka tu tutafakari maze ndio tusifike maze hizo levels sasa very nice Wada utareni tarehe sita aprili mwaka wa 1994 pale Rwanda capital city Kigali kuna tension kuna vitu wanaita euphemisms euphemisms ni zile vitu tunasema lakini ziko na maana fiche Euphemism zinatembea kwa radio zinasema cut the tall trees exterminate the cockroaches kile hao watu walikuwa na maanisha in a nutshell ni kuna watu hapa Rwanda wanaitwa watutsi wametubeba ufala for far too long they need to go tunataka to deal now vile inafaa so nyinyi wa Hutu kaeni rada kaeni ngangari jipangeni na silaha zenu It's about to go down. All we are waiting for is a sign in the sky. Awateti ukinishika na shangaa bana. Eh? Wanaume wasikii bibi wakiona ukinishika hivi. 
makani kama unani adjust bra hapa nyuma hii hapo tuko sawa sasa sti tunapata signal sasa sawa tunaweza endelea all right sawa so wale majamaa walikuwa wanangojea kitu moja ambao nimeita nini a sign from the sky na tarehe 6 aprili 1994 there came a sign from the sky ndege aircraft ilikuwa imebeba Burundi president na Rwandi, eh, Rwandan president bwana Juvenal Habiriamana ilipigwa missile wakati ina approach Kigali International Airport ikapigwa chini very fast na ika shika moto of course hakuna mtu alikuwa kwa hiyo ndege ali survive hiyo ndio sign from the sky wa hutu walikuwa wanangojea ndio wachachishe lakini kwanza tukule pause nataka turudi nyuma mpaka mbali sana mbali twende huko 1800s sababu nataka niwapatie tu historia kidogo tu ndio muone ili, ili kujaje tukafika hapa mahali watu wanaishi country moja hawapendani kiasi kwamba wako tayari kukatakatana na kupigana marisasi left right and center in the 1800s Rwanda ilikuwa ya colonized na wajerumani i think wajerumani walifika mahali wakachoka wakapatia nani belgian stapo eh hey, belgians stapo <laughs> waendelea kama umesoma historia ya Belgium bana kuna jamaa huko alikuwa anaitwa Leopold. Leopold alikuwa bad news. Sidhani kuna mtu amemassacre binadamu kwa hii dunia kama King Leopold. So Belgium wameingia pale, wamepiga tactic pale wa colonizers wanapenda sana. Inaitwa divide and rule. By the kila place kumekuwa na colonizers hiyo ni tactic wametumia sana. Lakini sasa kulikuwa na swala nyeti pale. Tunataka tu apply divide and rule hapa. Lakini tunawa divide na lines gani? Atuwezi cheza na race sababu wao wote ni the same race the all Africans so hiyo acha nayo Atuwezi wa divide na tribe sababu wao wote they are Rwandans they are Rwandans wanaongea Kinyarwanda wote w- wako sawa like ni, ni, ni kitu moja so tuta divide na nini Bana Mbelgia na kakaa chini akakuja hapa na solution akasema hao watu tunataka tu divide na physical characteristics physical attributes So to me discover Rwandans wako na nini mbili uh, some two characteristics kuna wale Rwandans ambao ni short and stout and very dark wale ni wahutu wale wanakula saa sawa ni mahumundu strong watu wanafanya mambo ya kilimo wanakula saa sawa alafu kuna matall dark uh, tall light skin very slender wana nywele za kishelisheli wana asili ya ki kushaitik kushaitik niko sho ukiangalia Rwanda uta notice those two types of people kuna hii squad fulani ya Rwanda wanakuwa wanakanika uso kiwa kwa maziwa like nikawa wamekula too soft life <laughs> eh maisha yao tu imekubali long noses kama wazungu so hao alami wakajiambia hao watu even though ni manugu ni manyeuthi wametukaribia kimpango like wako na zile attributes tunaona gani zinakaa sawa ziko poa ni wa skinny ni wa refu eh, light skin unajua so waka discover hawa sasa ndio tutatumia kupiga hii kitu divide and rule so watutsi wale walikuwa wanaita warembo warembo hao wakapatiwa kazi elite elite hawa wahutu ni kwa M watu wa mjengo yani nyinyi ni mkono tu mnaleta tu kifua na muscles hakuna kitu kingine akina mama nyinyi ni kupata tu watoto but hao wengine ah ah hao wengine tunawaleta ikifika ni issues za government eh, wa hutu nyinyi ni wananchi mkae huko uh, the tutsis nyinyi you look like leaders eh mnakaa yani mko tu sawa so ikakuwa hivyo for the longest time sasa kuna kwa ganangori ukipatia mtu power na hajui ku handle Salimo naona ni kama utanipatia hiyo towel nikae nayo hapa sababu wa, wa effect inafanya na sweat kama leta tu leta tu nikae nayo hapa itasaidia sana eh hey, kimbia kimbia mami chololo mami chololo eh hapo sawa asante sana bwana hapa nakubariki sana na upate bwana eh ni acha ikae hapa karibu na mimi So yeah watutsi wakaanza kuteka advantage hapana wewe ni nini unaniambia wewe ni mhutu toka hapa in fact 
kuja kwangu kesho saa 8 unilimie una upuzi sana so wakaanza kuwakandamiza wanaanza kuwa oppress mzee ama jamaa wanaichukua tu wanaichukua tu but you can only oppress some people for so long inafika wakati wataamua enough is enough na huo wakati ulifika oh, oh ime, ime, imetembea kanda sasa iko sawa iko fiti na wewe ni mtu wangu wa karibu ka hapo in case you notice kitu una unatuma unaitwa nani mtu wangu eh yeah? yeah? topa topa Je, <laughs> <laughs> uko mahali nimetoka topa ni kofia <laughs> Okay santi topa All right so ikafika mahali mzee hutu so akasema no 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 hatuwezi haiwezi so akaanza resistance E, sasa ni kuchachisha wacha katambe kwani iko nini wakaleta noma deadly by this time we are approaching the late 50s in fact tuko around 1959 the hutus wamekuwa unmanageable imefika wakati sasa no wameamua ni noma wako like 85% so ni wengi so hata tutsis kushikilia watu mzee ai haiwezi ni noma he belgians wakaona hapa kuna ngori sababu gani the whole world colonizers washaanza kupatiana independence hapo tuko 59 tunaelekea 60s unajua by this time ma countries washaanza kuongea story ya independence eh? jua se wengi walikam kupata independence in the 60s there about eh wakaona hapa sasa ni noma eh, sisi kama belgians wacha tujiondoe kabla hawa mahumundu walete ngori lakini kile tutafanya because we like drama si hawa tutsis ndio wamekuwa wakirani kitu patia hutu salafu ondokea <laughs> <laughs> nunua tu popcorn then watch wakijimaliza wenyewe kwa wenyewe so belgians wakakama wakasema tunaenda general le- elections 1960 eh, nyinyi muite ni watu wenu wawapigie kura nyinyi iteni watu wenu wawapigie kura mwenye anashinda achukue inchi the belgians knowing very well <laughs> hutus wako 85% of course Elections za 1960 aso alipiga hiyo kitu landslide sasa si tumeingia power sasa serikali ni yetu nyinyi tutsis mtafraya <laughs> <laughs> so tutsis walikuwa wachanja sana wakasema he hawa tu bila tumewakandamiza for long hatutaka hapa tungoje watu tufraye no pia hao wakaingia mitini a good number of the tutsis waliepea wapi Uganda so they were refugees in Uganda for too long walipiga huko karibu miaka 30 something 30 years later in 1990 ai hapana hata kama tulikosea kitambo no tuko na kwetu sisi ni watutsi tunafanya nini Rwanda i mean tunafanya nini Uganda sisi ni watutsi tunafaa kuwa Rwanda kama ni, ni ngori si walitufukuza tumekaa nje 30 years si tumelipia makosa yetu si tunafaa turudi ah wakashikana pale kwa vichaka maze wakaunda kitu inaitwa RPF Rwanda Patriotic Front headed by a very young guy fresh out of the Ugandan army and this guy's name was Paul Kagame Paul Kagame amepiga pale vita za Uganda deadly ameiva hii kitu mbaya sana ni hatari ameanzisha RPF ako na wafuasi asha train vijana kikosi iko full mzuka strong akaambia ni aje wadao it's 1990 we are going back home tunaingia na boda ya Uganda tutokee northern Rwanda tuanze ku infiltrate pole 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 mpaka tufike nyumbani mko tayari tuko tayari kaende so kagame na troops wakaanza kuingia wakapitia pale boda ya Uganda northern Rwanda ni kuchachisha 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 ika kwa sasa ni all out conflict civil war ikaanzia hapo government forces wanatuma maaskari huko wanakabiliana na RPF but RPF wako sawa like training yao ni deadly yani wasi wamekuwa war for some time wakipigania vita za Uganda kule so wako sawa so wakasumbua na deadly maze paka hii story yote ika get attention ya the world the international community ikagundua wait there's some conflict happening in Rwanda Tusipoenda pale tuchungulie tujue ni nini na happen itakuwa blanda. So tufanyeni aje? Organization of African Unity, OAU. No, angalieni vile mtakutanisha hao watu wawili wakae chini wasikizane sababu at the end of the day they are Rwandans that country belongs to both parties. 
OAU wakaanza Peace Talks 1992 wakakalisha RPF Paul Kagame chini na government eh, bwana Juvenal eh, Habiriamana wakawaambia bana mnapigana nini nyinyi ni mandugu wacheni hiyo mchezo bana watu wanakufa huko eh kaeni chini msikizane angalia ni vile mtapiga power sharing pale wewe ukiwa rais patia huyu ata deputy ya skefiti eh bana mbona mbona tunaishi hivi kama wanyama na the talks zikakuwa on for like one year na kulikuwa kuna ka, by the way nikaa kuna headway ni kama watu washaanza kukubaliana by the way tuko box hakuna haja ya tupigane wacha si turudi mtaa tusikizane vile tuta tutakacheza the last of those meetings ilikuwa held mahali panaitwa Arusha Tanzania na hiyo meeting iliitwa the Arusha Peace Accord ambayo ilikuja na vipengele ambavyo wale wa Rwanda watafuata kuhakikisha peace imerudi Rwanda na sababu wa Afrika pia saa ingine mnakuwaga na udogomodhi atuta wa trust tutaform kikosi ya kuhakikisha hii mambo tume discuss hapa mume implement na hiyo kikosi inafomiwa na nani na the united nations ndio waka come up na the united nation uh, assistant mission in rwanda unamir so unamir waka so the way the un works when operating in all countries so if we are going so, for some peacekeeping mission in rwanda tutaongea na waafrika wenzetu eh hey, ghana tusaidie na maaskari wenu kenya tusaidie na askari wenu na uh, south africa nani nani tusaidie na askari wenu tuunde kikosi fiti ya unamir tuingie na Uganda, eh, Rwanda waende wasaidie na peacekeeping and that is exactly what happens in a small country in west africa called senegal kwa capital city dakar kuna a very diligent soldier alikuwa pale alikuwa ame rise ranks kidogo amefika level ya captain na jina yake ilikuwa captain bai diang captain bai diang sababu ni mtu anafanya kazi kwa uadilifu ako sawa lazima angekuwa kwa ipi skipping mission sababu this is a very sensitive ma- uh, matter so lazima wangetafuta wale soldiers best of the best so captain bai diang akaitwa akaambiwa ni aje buda wewe umesikia zile conflicts zimekuwa zikiendelea pale Rwanda naweza taka sana wewe ukam uingie kwa hiki kosi ya Unamir ingia ni Rwanda ai saidieni hao watu bana wamepigana for far too long it's been three years of civil war na i think enough is enough unaonaje hii ni kitu itaweza captain bai diang being a humanitarian akasema why not why not anything for a united states of africa mimi nimejitolea wacha niingie Rwanda nihakikishe kila kitu kiko sawa kila kitu kiko shwari na mbaye diang anaaga bibi yake kwa heri anafana ndege pale ya UN na anaingia Kigali International Airport in 1992 1993 there about peacekeeping mission Uh, the Arusha Accord imeshakuwa discussed imeisha mwezi wa I think 7 ama mwezi wa 8 1993 watu washarudi Rwanda in fact wale rebels Rwanda Patriotic Front akina Kagame sasa wako Bush wako tu mitani mitani wanajaribu ku, kucheki vile ipa wa sharing ita, ita, itakuwa vile itakuwa executed kumbe hutu za wapendi hiyo hutu wanasikia inaonja kama njahe hiyo so Awa se watu dhulumu for 100 years. Sisi tuwapige tu exile kidogo ya 30 years. Sasa okay everything is okay. Let's go back to normal. Aje haiwezi. Haiwezi. So nyinyi endeni mupige peacekeeping zenu, peace talk zenu zote. But awa se tukiwaona si tunapita nao. Nyi kaeni mkijua hivyo. So kwa ma radio nini 93 yote ikienda kuisha 94 ikianza ni hate speech tup tutsis waliitwa all sorts of names maze wakaambiwa bana umusijaribu kutrita watu kama binadamu sababu wale ni wanyama treat them like the animals they are kaeni stand by serikali imejipanga believe you tutahakikisha mko armed vile inafaa ku deal na manyoka kidogo kidogo hutu zameleta vijana pale youth youth wing sasa mababu wao wa huko wako pale wameunda maze kikosi Militia inajita the interahamwe interahamwe hao watu haki sijui ni nini walikuwa wanapewa kila asubuhi but any bit of humanity ilitolewa ndani yao wase kabisa wakaenda wakatengeneza marungu zingine nono nono ndi wanapiga nazo tizi huko 
the chief of defense in Rwanda at the time alikuwa anaitwa Mr uh, Basora ama ni Kabasora Basora Bagasora Mr Bagasora ame organize shipment ya mapanga sijui ni kutoka South Africa ama ni kutoka China in the thousands like Rwanda wali ship mapanga zilikuwa zinaletwa na containers vijana wanaambiwa mazee usikubali kukaa kwa nyumba kama hauko armed enda jipange bana tumewaletea panga za free enda wewe hata hatutaki ID we kuja chukua panga as long as uko na vidole za kuishikilia come pika mashete wewe mavijana wakajipanga proper na wakaambiwa sasa nini tulieni mko na training ya kutosha ikifika wakati tutawaarifu ndio ikafika ile tarehe sita April 1994 Habiria Mana president wa, Burundi, wa Rwanda akiwa na counterpart wake wa Burundi wakiingia Rwanda bana kupiga story mbili tatu Mizayo ikatandika ndege ikawaeka chini of course they both died on the spot akukuwa na survivors kwa hiyo accident pale kwa radio ikaanza tuliwaambiaje si niliwaambia ama tutsi ni manyoka wameangusha president wenu wamemaliza sasa wakati wa kutoa mapanga chini ya kitanda umefika. Mtutsi ni mtutsi. Sitaki kujua kama umemuoa. Sitaki kujua kama yeye ni padri wako kwa kanisa. Sitaki kujua kama ni daktari anakutibu. Mtutsi ni mtutsi. Pita na yeye. My friend. Tarehe saba April. Atrocities zilianza kufanyika Kigali zilikuwa hazijaonekana in the continent of Africa in a very long time. Husbands stand on their wives. Like ulilala usiku, umelala na mubebe wako hapa kando, asubuhi unaamka unapata news ndege ya president iliangushwa na ni matutsi waliwangusha hiyo ndege na bibi yako ni mtutsi. Unaingia chini ya kitanda, unatoa panga, unaanza na yeye. That is exactly what happened. Vijana wamechonga marungu, rungu nono nono wameingia nazo kwa streets, wameweka ma roadblocks, barricades unafika hapo mazeju sama tutsi walisikia kumeharibika wakaanza ku, kukanikawa na hepa roadblocks zimewekwa leta kitambulisho i say wale belgians wakati walikuwa na separate watu from uh, between hutus and tutsis walipatia watu passes ids so id yako inasema kama we ni mhutu ama we ni mtutsi roadblock leta id kama we ni mtutsi shuka baki hapa people were beheaded kwa roadblocks Mazee hawataki kujua mazee huyu ni wife wangu jo mimi ni, ni, ni mhutu lakini wife wangu ni mtutsi ye ana shida mazee wacha niende na a a mtu wewe unaambiwa wewe endelea na safari leta bibi yako lete pigwa panga hapo quick quick day two. hii sasa ni tarehe nane. a international community wako na ninoma a a a a, 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 a. Rwanda imechacha deadly watu wanatandikwa vitangori ikabidi wametuma troops waende wachukue watu wao wenye wako Rwanda So the French people sababu the French wanapenda Rwanda sana walikuwa na watu wao wengi sana French forces French troops wakatumwa maze in the hundreds armed to the teeth wakaingia kwa airport Kigali na wakaenda straight wakiokota watu wao watu wa United Nations wako hapa mdosi wao ni generali kutoka Canada anaitwa General Delaire Delaire maze anaangalia French troops anawabeg anawaambia my friend hawa se tuna deal nao ni wasi wako na mapanga nyi mko na maze all assortments of weapons tafadhali we beg you tuko kwa magoti zetu msijaribu kutoka mtu wache maze nyinyi mkitoka mtu wache hawa se watauliwa wengi as it is sign day 2 na already we can count like 10 20000 people dead please maze mkichukua watu wenu msituache french troops walienda wakachukua watu wao wako wapandisha kwa lori some tutsis waka beg wakaambia french troops please akimkitoka hapa ni hivyo tumemalizwa the french troops wakawaeka kwa malori zao na wakatembea vizuri pale mbele wakapata roadblock the french troops had all sorts of machinery ku stop hawase kwa roadblock but they did nothing walisimama kwa roadblock au majamaa chini wakawaambia ni aje buda tuspotezeane wakati si hatuna shida na nyinyi wa Faransa mumebeba watutsi hapo ndani washukishe hapa saa hii the french proceeded to eject the tutsis from their lorries wakaona live wakikula mapanga kwa roadblock and they did nothing wako na guns zao wako na rpgs wako na kila kitu but hakuna kitu walifanya wakaenda wakaeka watu wao kwa ndege 
and they flew to Paris. US Army, same thing. Wamekuja sababu, American Embassy, kuna tutsis wamejificha huko. Tayari American Embassy isha kula shell, Ime, imepigwa ile, kuna kitu inaitagwa shell, inarushangwa huko, inaenda, inalipuka, nika, nika bomb. Isha shelliwa American Embassy, kuna watu wawa kondani. Kuna matutsis walikuwa wamekuja kujificha pale kwa American Embassy. Shell tayari mewapiga, kadha wame, wameuliwa. Lakini, kuna wale wako alive, sababu walingia kujificha pale wengi. American forces, same thing. Armed to the teeth, walichukua tu watu wao, wakaweka kwa malori, and they proceeded to take them to the airport, leaving the rest to die. Maze, US walitoka tu hivi American Embassy, kikosi cha wahutu kikaingia pale ndani, na wakapiga masaka aijawai onekana. Ita imiote, United Nations soldiers, wanashindua chief, kwa nii? Mana ya peacekeeping ni nini? So, kama mneza kuja hapa nyinyi wenye mko armed na msaidi, then sisi mnatueka hapa tufanya nini? First of all, mume tuleta hapa sisi UN soldiers, we are not armed, by the UN soldiers were unarmed. They did not even have pistols. Walikuwa tu na uniform bus na kofia ya blue. Bus! Like uneza flash ya mtu yo kofia, wewe, weka panga chini, wewe, nikivai kofia, wewe. Tafraya. It was ridiculous. General Delaire, mdosi wa UN, anapiga, yo, the UN forces, anatuma mafax, UN headquarters, New York, anawambia chief, okay, sawa, sawa. International community wametuma ma soldiers wao, wamejiami kuruka, but wamekata kusaidia wasewe, ah, so anadedi hapa. Juni wa Afrika, okay, ni sawa. Sisi tuko kwa ground, tunacheki zile atrocities zinaendelea. UN, please, mkona power. Tutumieni tu silaha na reinforcement our set tunaweza deal nao. Chief tuna deal na watu wanaocheza na panga bana. Panga like hao si watu wanaweza tuchukua hata 2 hours. Like hiyo contingent ya French forces walikuwa hapa wange deal na hiki kitu. Like hii samoi ingekuwa imeescalate mali imefika saa hii. Tutumieni reinforcement tutumieni silaha tu deal nao say. We 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 we. Wadao. Sikujua fax iko na blue ticks. He, wacha ni kuambie kap, General Dele alilengwa, mbaka akajulza, wait, ni, ni mi ndio ni meandika na lugawa, sewa ilewe ya maa? Mbona asewa ni ongeleishi? US, waka kwa, really, unajua US ni superpower. Wewe ukijita superpower, tutaku ongelesha. Wewe, we ni superpower bana, wasewa na dedi Rwanda bana, uta, una, itakuwa aje? He, eh, Bill Clinton akambia, eh, cheki. <laughs> bana, last year nimekua mogadishu. Mumeona vile soldiers wangu walifanyu wa Mogadishu. Munataka tena nirudi kuhua watoto wangu tena Rwanda, ha? Muna mchezo. Pamba neni? Pamba neni? Tueni zile vitabu za Golden Bells, muwaimbie mahins. <laughs> Jaribini kutuma missionaries, muone kama wataokoka, waeke panga chini. Ya. Yeah. Maze kutuma troops hapo ni noma. Plus, haijafika uh, ile level yenye atisatu naeza sema ningori. Haijafika genocide levels, unajua? Hiyo ni kitu hata polisi waneza pambana. Ambia zii, polisi wako part of it. Polisi ni wanakatakata watu kwa streets. Rwandan military ndi wana shoot wa mama waki wana ball. Maze, like, ni nini? Hey, Clinton akama ambia joe pambana. We ni peacekeeper, peacekeep. <laughs> so, General Dele akajua ako peke yake. Hapa, kame chacha deadly. In fact, nime jump gun, nime shafika day, day three. In fact, toka day three, rudi day two. <laughs> day two, sindio kameanza kuchacha sasa. Jana ndege ilianguka. Leo ndio kamechacha. Ha. Kuna prime minister mama anaitua Agat. 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 Agat uingilimana ako na jina mrefu waki. Prime minister Agat ni wale walikuwa anaitua moderate Hutus. Moderate Hutus ni wale Hutus wenye wanaonea tutsis uoye. Uh, najua mini mhutu na aso wali tufanya mbaya, lakini aki woye, muachilie, wachana nao. Hakuna, si washa enda huko 30 years, washa, wachana nao, tuendele tu. The hutus wako anapenda moderate hutus. So, anyone who was a tutsi and a moderate hutu, alikuwa anatandikwa. So, oh, eh, viko sawa. So the moderate hutu, Agat Uwingilimana, was the first one to go. Wakati ndege iliangushwa hivi, vita ikaanza, Agat akaendewa. Agata alikuwa na husband na watoto wawili ya masijua watatu. watatu. Akaficha watoto, akabaki na husband, wakajitolea mhanga. 
wale ma government forces wakaingia wakapiga risasi hapo quick quick walijaribu kutafuta watoto wakawakosa kumbe watoto wamefichwa hao ma forces wakasema ni aje tutarudi najua watoto wako mahali tutawatafuta mpaka tuwapate na wakatoka wakaondokea huyu ndio the first government official anakufa day two. pale UN headquarters eh, Unimir headquarters mnakumbuka ule captain nimewaambia ametoka Senegal amekuja sasa kuangalia mambo ya peacekeeping ashapata ripoti watoto wa Agat wamesha I mean eh, Agat na bibi na bwana yake washauliwa watoto bado wako akachukua gari ya UN by the way it was illegal for any UN officer to engage sababu waliambiwa a a nyinyi jaribini kuongelesha tu watu mambo ya kwenda kuwachukua kuwabeba na magari zenu hiyo tumekatazwa msijaribu kufanya hiyo kitu but ule jamaa angekaa pale akijua kuna watoto wame, wako karibu kuuliwa mahali so akajituma akaenda mpaka mahali ya watoto wamefichwa akafika akachukua watoto watatu kwa gari yake ya UN akawafunika vizuri na gunia na akapita roadblocks za mahutu akapeleka watoto mpaka kwa a safe place eh, manned na UN soldiers akaweka huko ndani this is illegal mind you hakuna mtu anafaa fanya kitu kama hiyo then sasa kuja hapa mali tulikuwa tumefika Bill Clinton amekataa kutuma reinforcement UN wamesema hawatumi reinforcement hawa se wako on their own Captain Diang akajiita akajiuliza ingekuwa ni mimi mazee kwa country yangu tunauliwa kama kuku ningesikia aje mazee mtu akiwa na power na hasaidi afanye kitu au uongo mimi sitakuwa huo mtu nitajitolea na hao watu i will save as many people as i can kama ni ngori ni ngori kazi ikiisha wacha iishe lakini mimi nimefanya kazi ya Mungu nakwambia alienda akapiga hiyo gari yake full tank akaanza kazi ingia pale mahali hutus wanachachisha ongea na hutus wa bribe na masfegi wa bribe na tei kila kitu mazee endeni leo kujeni kesho wacheni na hao watu mume washtua wamechoka hata sasa unataka kuua mtu amechoka haki please wachana nao wachana nao fanya ni hivi shikeni hata machupa piga mafegi mbili tatu endeni mpumzike hata nyinyi kesho mkuje mdeal na watu masolja wakitoka hivi captain dianga anawaeka kwa gari yake teke teke anawapeleka hoteli inaitwa the mill collins huko ndio ilikuwa place mzee UN wame set aside kupatia wa say refuge alipiga hizo trips in in the hundreds wanasema mzee captain diang ali save over 1000 people na hiyo gari yake na mafuta ya un eh peace keeper not peace keepers french troops na us troops na hiyo artillery yote awaku save a single person captain diang without a gun armed with his vehicle ali save a, more than a thousand people iko time mzee amegundua now hiki tu imego out of hand In fact kila mtu anauana preacher priest wa Catholic Church anapiga waumini marisasi sababu wamekuja kujificha kwa kanisa yao na ni matutsi anawashoot kama sijui nini captain Diang akaingia huko na hiyo gari yake maze kwanza akaambia oh priest una ujinga alipata amewekea mother gun kwa kichwa akamuza chief una do unataka mama kwa nini wachana hiyo ujinga bana wewe ni priest unafanya nini na bunduki huo mtu bana na Matthew chapter 6 wachana bunduki bana wewe una upuzi Una upuzi sana wewe weka hiyo kitu huko chini bana usikuwe hivyo huo madha katolewa akaikwa kwa gari quick fast wale wasio walikuwa wamebaki alive hapo watu wawili watatu wanne wakaingizwa kwa gari teke teke akaenda akiwa save akiwa save akapata ripoti kuna wamama wamechimba shimo wanaweka watoto chini wenye wako miaka mbili and below wenye hawezi tembea vizuri hawezi kimbia vizuri wanawafunikia na mabati na matawi fulani wanaenda hustle kutafuta chakula nini then wakirudi wanatoa ile mabati wamefunika shimo wanapatia watoto chakula na wanajificha hapo mpaka asubuhi asubuhi ikifika wanatoka wanafunika mabati una imagine unazika mtoto wako ndio tu asipatikane na wale rebels captain Diang akasikia kuna wamama wanazika watoto huko mchana sababu rebels wanaenda wakifagia wakifagia captain Diang na gari yake teke teke akaingia mpaka hiyo hiyo maeneo mzee anafika hivi anapata hutus walishagundua kuna watoto wanazikwa mchana usiku wanafunguliwa 
wakaenda wakafungua hiyo mahali watoto wamezikwa pale wakapata watoto washazoea hii lifestyle wanacheza tu mabano huko ndani like hata without a care in the world the hutus hata hawakuwa na time ya ku waste nao walienda tu wakachukua mitungi ya mafuta wakamwaga ndani ya shimo wakaipiga kiberiti cha na wakaacha watoto wakiungua captain diang by the time anafika anapata two smoldering children like wamechomeka wameisha wameisha wamama walisikia watoto wanachomeka wakaamua kama mbaya mbaya wacha katambe wakarudi mbio kujaribu ku rescue watoto wakapatikana sasa vizuri na mahutu panga panga rungu panga panga rungu kila mtu done like that was the first time captain diang alika chini akasema tusidanganyane wa afrika sisi ni wanyama sisi ni wanyama like ka unaweza kachini uchome mtoto wa miaka mbili. akicheza na wenzake ndani ya shimo you are an animal alifanya everything he could akiangalia pale kwa nini yake ya duty inamuonyesha amebakisha siku 12 arudi home sababu alikuwa anaenda na shift wana rotate so one time akapiga simu akaongea na wife wake akamwambia ni aje baby nimebakisha 12 days nirudi nitoke Rwanda nimeona atrocities in Rwanda zenye siko sure naweza endelea tena after hapa after 12 days i'm coming back home and i'm resigning from the military it's too much it's too much like ni hapana haiwezi so wife akafurahi sababu walikuwa mazema peacekeepers wanakuliwa huko nje mbaya sana Belgian peacekeepers walishikwa wakiwa 10 wakakastretiwa na wakauliwa so wife wake anasikia story akiwa home Senegal anashindwa guy husband wangu aki so he phone call maze ya mbaye diang kuambia wife wake this is it i'm done that was everything she wanted to hear akamuliza ni aje unaona ukitoboa hizi 12 days zimebaki akamwambia chief sasa the beauty about it ni kwamba hakuna mse anapendwa hii Rwanda kuniliko Jiang alikuwa anasimama hivi kwa roadblock wase wanafurahi like umetoka kuchinja mtu hapa ah Jiang maliza Buda awo uh kwaje Buda like alikuwa my best deadly sababu Jiang alikuwa anasafirisha watu wao even though anasafirisha pia wale watu wengine bado anasafirisha watu wao like hata hawa Hutus watu wao wakichachiwa huko Diang alikuwa anaenda na wachukua anawaleta huko mali ni kusave. So walikuwa wameunda karapa ukafiti. Akaambia wife wake, "Wife, kama kuna kitu ufai kujali, ni safety yangu." Maze mimi nina relationship fit na RPF akina Kagame, the Tutsis, na niko na relationship fit na Mahutus. So niko sawa. Kitu tu nimechoka kuona ni wase innocent wakikatakatwa maze. Me I think nimefanya pati yangu nimesafirisha wase wengi sana. So in 12 days I'm coming home. Somewhere below. <laughs> so Captain Bai Diang akaendelea kupiga kazi yake. Ah uh, 12 days zimebaki. Ameongea na waifu wake leo. 3 days after ameongea na waifu wake, akapata ripoti kuna matutsi wamekuwa surrounded somewhere. Itabidi atoke mbio maze aende deal na hiyo situation. Captain Bai Mazaya akaingia pale UN headquarters akachukua eh, Unimail headquarters akachukua gari yake kama kawa alikuwa anatembea na gunia fulani ya UNICEF hiyo gunia ndio alikuwa anatandika nao wase hapo nyuma like akishatandika matutsi hapo ama mahutus anawafunika na hiyo gunia ya blue ya UNICEF ndio apite nao kwa roadblocks even though at some point walijua wewe oh, unasafirisha mbogi but ni sawa wafunike tu in case upate na mainterahamu wao wamevuta bangi ya watambui walete ngori So alikuwa anawafunika tu to be safe. So akachukua gari yake, ile gunia iko sawa pale, akawasha gari na akaishia. On his way kwenda ku rescue wa majamaa, akapata ile roadblock ya wale wase wa awo Buda. So akasimama maze, akaingia hapa chini kuchukulia majamaa fegi na tei. Hiyo ndio ilikuwa desturi. Anawagota, wana crack jokes, anawachukulia fegi, tei anawapatia anabid kwaheri na anapita roadblock inafunguliwa anapita maze akichukua tu fegi zake hivi Rwandan Patriotic Front rebels washafika Kigali wameingia they are here 
These guys are shelling the city like nobody's business. Oh, so shells, what are you shell nini? Msha yona kwa pictures za military ama kwa videos za military, makarao wa military fulani wanakoga na kakitu, wanachukua ka something, wanaingiza, then wana yuachilia. Inapiga fu. Msha yona kitu. Hiyo ndio shells. So maze RPF wana shell city deadly sababu wanata ku take control. One of the shells in a come in anguka right behind captain by Diang's vehicle so the way this thing operates ni ikisha gonga chini ilipuke ndani kuna hundreds of metal pieces zinakuwa strung all over so mazizi li pita na kila kitu hapo mazizi kaingia kwa gari nini zikapita through the seats na kama tatu zikapata captain by Diang kwa kichwa somewhere hapa eh hey, zikam damage vibaya sana but like he died instantly akwata na time ya kuangalia mazeni nini hiyo ime so wase maze wakiwa hapo wanangojea nini waliona tu jamaa maze shell imelipuka jamaa melin forward damu inatoka rebels wenyewe wana try wale walikuwa wajaumizwa na hiyo shell wana try kumtingiza maze captain 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 amka maze that goes to show you Maze the type of person whom say alikuwa like even the enemies they were rooting for him wana muambia maze budam kama maze waka discover jo ameenda so vile un uh, troops walipata hiyo report waka come of course the rebels wenye walikuwa wamebaki wali waliingia mitini maze wale majamaa waka come wakatoa captain bay wakamweka kwa stretcher maze wanatafuta body bag body bag tu ya kuwekea mse mwenye amelipa the ultimate prize maze for humans they could not find a single body bag, body bag in the entire city sababu watu walikuwa nauliwa kila mahali body bag za UN ndio zilikuwa zinatumika maze kusafirisha hao watu wamefika mahali they've run out of body bags ile gunia ya UNICEF yenye captain Diang alikuwa anaficha nayo watu hii na wase akiwabeba hiyo ndio gunia walimfunika nayo wakamweka kwa gari vizuri na wakamsafirisha maze after two days akapele kwa mtaani uh, Dakar Senegal wife wake alikuwa devastated like umse tulikuwa tumeongea na eh, three days maze prior mnaniambiaje maze yuko aliniashua alini maze yeye ni mse ametambulika na kila mse hakuna mse anaweza hata mham mnaniambiaje maze yuko akaambiwa maze it is what it is it is what it is so akazika captain Diang and in true human fashion story ya captain Diang ikasaulika kabisa although wezi wa blame juu Rwanda bado ilikuwa inaendelea kukua hot and hot and hot so how alirudi ku maintain walirudi kuendelea na kazi ya kujaribu kuleta peace maze by the time he was dying ilikuwa may aso ali fight the whole of june na july tare 17 ndio hizo ngori zote ziliisha anybody who died hapo kwa hiyo nini mambo yake ilishasaulika like they've seen so much ilikuwa ni noma so eventually maze history ya captain hata ilikuwa mkasaulika until 2014 juzi sana 2014 after almost uh, 20 years ndio aso alifufua tena maze wakasema this guy was a hero alikufia wase maze na kumwacha hivyo bana itakuwa ni unfair maze so akakama hapo na kitu inaitwa captain by the young awards ya wale soldiers wenye wa, wana show courage maze kwa battlefield na wale wanajitolea deadly ku protect their own maze na in fact the first winner of captain by diang award ilikuwa ni mkongole alisaidia mtanzania maze alipigwa marisasi akisaidia mtanzania akadedi that's the first recipient anyway uh, captain by diang mambo yake ili, ilishi hapo uh, idea ya story ilikuwa tu kwa show vile wasema maze Uh, despite the madness kuna wase bado waga wana remain true maze to humanity wase wako na utu eventually after 100 days of fighting they discovered maze iwo yote ilikuwa ni nonsense tumelipa maze very expensive ile kitu tulikuwa tuna try ku fight maze after 100 days tume lose so much more hata afadhali atungeenda hivi vita so wakaanza ku rebuild pole 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 and i think as we speak rwanda ni country saina do fiti but I think in gefa kukua way way far kama si hizo 3 months zenye waliingia fighting maze ili warudisha nyuma big time big time so niki conclude story nataka niwaambie kitu moja the fact that it happened in Rwanda can very easily happen here 
very easily. Sometimes na unaga watu wanasimama kwa podium as recent as juzi, I'm talking about last month. Eh, kinyangarika ya mtu politician anasimama anasema sijui madoa doa zitolewe Rift Valley. Mlisikie huku mbafu. Mkimuona mumwambie ni mtu bure kabisa angezaliwa mkate daktari na mama yake wagawane. Bure kabisa. Nonsense kama hiyo ndio inafanya countries zinaenda hiyo route ya Rwanda. Na nyinyi sasa hivi wasemko enlightened mnaona hiyo puzi msikubali. By them to akileta nonsense kama hiyo mnamwambia get out of here man. Ya yeah, toka hapa na ukwenda kabisa au sio? Nyinyi wa true maze hii country inawategemea endeleeni na hiyo design tusikubali kubebwa ufala. Na watambua sana maze God our bless jo nyinyi wa true sana. Peace.